Hello and welcome to Unleashed. I'm your host, Will Bachman, and this is part of our mini series of short case studies of work that consultants have done related to artificial intelligence. I'm delighted to welcome on the show today, Cheryl Lim Tan. Cheryl, welcome to the show. Thanks, Will. Happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So, Cheryl, tell us about this client that you served. Uh, I understand it's a have a financial AI advisor sort of tool. Tell us, we're going to keep it sanitized, the, the name of the firm, but tell us a little, a little about the firm that you served and then let's walk us through what you did. Yeah, happy to go through it. Um, so this is, uh, the client I was serving is a financial wellness product that is powered by AI. And um, they, when I met them, they were pretty early in their journey Um had some seed funding and we're looking to really raise awareness of their product right before raising series A. Um, They had a good product, um, just needed to refine it a little bit further. And they also needed more users to come on board, use the product, give them more feedback so that they can continue to um, make adjustments to the the features. Um, And I think also, what you see in a lot of these earlier stage startups is the founders, they're like brilliant technical entrepreneurs. Um, they've never really done marketing before. And so when I um, met them, they were really looking for someone to stand up the entire marketing function and really get them um, before their core, core audience. So um, in this in this scenario um, with the client, I was actually starting with the basics, like what is your company? What is your brand? What do you stand for? Why are your brand truths? Um, and then who is your target audience? And um, why does what you do matter to them? What's your value proposition? Um, which they had some of, but I think for them, a structured way of articulating um, all those you know, key truths about the brand in a, in a framework that they could then use to share internally with their team. And also like as they were going out to investors, um, putting it all together in a really clear, concise framework was really important for them. So that was the first bit, like figuring out brand architecture, identity, and um, our target audience. Mm. Um, and then I think, you know, with with AI, um, as you're thinking about who, who you're targeting, it's interesting because I think in the early phase, it's often the early adopters, the tech enthusiasts, the geeks, right, who are coming on board and trying out your product. And then if you want to grow and scale, you got to figure out how to pivot pretty quickly into, especially if it's a consumer product, you got to figure out how to pivot and make it um, accessible and approachable for the everyday consumer to use. So um, some of the things that we worked through was, you know, who's our core audience in the beginning, but then who do we need to branch out to in like phase two and three? And then how do we reach them? And how do we modify our messaging so that, um, it becomes, you know, approachable for the everyday consumer. Um, and I think with AI too, the other thing um, to keep in mind that we we worked through was um, being clear about articulating what's different about your product versus chat GPT or some other like free tool that they could use. Like why should the user subscribe and use your tool and, you know, give you $5 a month versus just using a free um, product out there? So, you know, being really clear about articulating um, your value, your unique value prop and why it's worth paying for. Um, And then also I think another element that's really important is education. So these, a lot of these AI tools are gonna be um, prompt driven and consumers just, you know, they they don't really know how to interact with the UI um, and how to prompt it appropriately. So, we spend a lot of time also developing education for the consumers. Um, we have like a whole suite of YouTube um, videos on like, here's how to prompt the tool to give you such and such um, situation or information. Um, so in the AI world, I think if you have consumer product and you're trying to reach uh, a new, like you're trying to educate a new consumer, um, you got to think about con- like consumer education is a really big part of your marketing process, um, or you're not going to be able to draw the right audience in. Um, so there was a whole piece that we did around uh, education um, as part of 
uh, targeting our audience. Um, I think the other thing um, that was really key for us was figuring out like what channels our various um, key target audience was in. Um, we spent a lot of time developing personas like, you know, who's, who is our early adopter? Bob, he's, you know, in his forties, he graduated from Carnegie Mellon and he's like a financial advisor, blah, blah, blah. And then you've got like this next wave of like, um, you know, tech savvy, a little younger, um, like tech enthusiasts, maybe, um, using this more, more for themselves to learn about, uh, financial wellness. Um, and then you've got like, you know, somebody else who has a different, you know, goal for why they're using your tool and like being really clear about here are the different personas here for each of them. The value that you bring is maybe slightly different. And so the messaging you're giving each of them is going to be different as well. Um, and just being clear about where these personas hang out, how do they learn about your product and what they need to hear. So then we distilled it into a very clear, like framework of um for each persona what what channels do we use to reach them what's the top three messages you need to to know um what are the pain points that you're fixing for them and um you know like how what what can we expect from them uh in their customer journey going forward like how do we retain them how do we deepen their relationship with the company so getting really clear about um distinctly marketing to unique personas um I, i'm just like talking but yeah, this is <laughs> like good. interrupt me if there's any like any i area will where... yeah okay <laughs> um so what did you discover there's a lot of ai tools out there now i think the chat gpt store has something like three million chat gpts that are customized so there's a lot of competition what did you discover as you were doing, you know, consumer insights, anything surprising to you about the types of users uh, that were open to using an AI tool, anything surprising, like maybe certain classes of, or groups of users would be normally reluctant to use a human advisor, but they were open to this that in some ways, or uh, what, what, tell us about some of the consumer insights that you came up with. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, interestingly, you know, Gen Z is probably going to be one of the highest adopters of AI going forward in their everyday lives, just because they are, you know, digital natives. I think the millennials and Gen X, they'll, they'll come along, um, but they're not, I think they're a little more cautious and hesitant about adopting um, AI in their lives. Also, they they currently have things that work for them. Um, and so um, having to change the behavior takes a little bit more um, time and more touch points along the way for them to to want to be involved. Having said that, though, I think because um, the proliferation of AI has been so broad in 2023, um, it's really helped, I think, a lot of these AI companies to get in front of um, their target audience and have permission to engage with them. Um, like while we found that I think the younger generations, the more tech savvy ones are more likely to adopt AI, um, you know, the older ones are still, they're coming along and it's at a relatively fast pace, I, I would think, for how new the technology is. Um, I think too, like a lot of companies that are trying to reach these audiences, um, like I, like how I described being clear about your personas and who you're targeting. Um, like as we were thinking about how to um, creatively, uh, you know, reach our audience and um, kind of bring our brand before them, you know, we looked at like a lot of things, even things like the colors that you use and the layout of like your site or your app. Um, we noticed that a lot of companies were, you know, very techy, like they would have like the, like a black background and look like, like a pro, you know, like catering to like programmers, um, like more like dark mode, right. Um, in their, their coloring. Um, and, 
you know, that says something right to the consumer. It's like, don't use my app unless you have a master's degree in, you know, computer science <laughs> uh, versus like some of the more like mainstream apps that were trying to go after this, like everyday mm-hmm. consumer. Um, the colors were much more approachable. It felt like a, you know, like an e-commerce site, like a retail mm-hmm. site. Um, it felt like it was um, more catered towards like anyone, any user could use it. Um, even the UI UX was much more uh, approachable and more friendly. So I think what we noticed was, you know, a lot of these early AI, AI startups like had to, you have to kind of go through this this learning curve of mm-hmm. figuring out like who's who am I trying to reach, and how do I tell them um, that I am the app that's appropriate for their demographic. Um, so being really conscious about that is is really important. And maybe in some cases you really do want to only target super tech savvy people as your first adopters, mm-hmm. and then you present your brand in such a way to to, to signal that that's who you want. There, there's so many, so much competition now. What did you learn about, you know, regarding SEO, search engine optimization, and paid search? Uh, mm-hmm. I imagine some of these terms are pretty competitive with AI right now. What were some of the ways that you found around that, or how did you go about the digital marketing piece? Yeah, we actually had a pretty broad. Um, marketing mix so seo is important it was definitely one of our pillars and we were spending against it testing different search terms almost weekly we would um, update our our list and try to further optimize um at the same time we were also spending a lot of time on content marketing um and doing a lot more in the organic space so um we basically tested every kind of social media like instagram tiktok Twitter or X um, threads when it launched um, YouTube shorts. uh, And, you know, we figured out to like, if there was a chance to leverage content, the same content across multiple um, channels, we would. Um, We also worked with influencers within um, many of those spaces, um, paid influencers, uh, we also have an affiliate program, so you can get your own link and get commissions if you uh, drive clicks and conversions through your link. Um, we also, you know, had email marketing, which crazy enough in 2024 still works. Um, both our own, you know, list um, that we built up over time, as well as actually sponsorships um, and placements and other email lists. There are actually so many AI email lists out there. Um, it's it's crazy. And actually we got some really good conversion through several of them. Um, and how yeah, does that work? Do yeah. you, are there like brokers for this where you can uh, find email lists that are newsletters or something and they will yeah. put your ad in there for you? How does that work? Yeah, there there are brokers. Um, we actually went directly to a lot of them so that we didn't have to, um, you know, kind of pay the finder's fee. But also because we were very, we wanted to be very selective on which ones we worked with that were a good fit for our brand and audience. Um, so yeah, you can, you, yeah, you can find a lot of these lists if you just search for them. Um, funnily enough, like I think once you pay for the first one, brokers will find you and be like, Hey, I saw your ad in this list. Are you interested in these five other ones that have a really good audience? And then you're like, sure, tell me more. But um, yeah, it's, it's funnily enough, uh, email marketing still works and it's, uh, it was a great way for us to pick up some new users as well. Um, I have to mention, of course, like discord, if you're an AI and you don't have a, your own discord, discord community, you're, you're missing out. Cause that's where, Users talk about different things that are important to them and they're um, in AI. So uh, t- tell else- me about tell me about that. So you'd have to have your your own Discord community yes. related to your product. Yes, and it's a great way to get like customer feedback and also to announce things that you're launching. Um, yeah, we actually had like a full time um, community manager in Discord every day. Um, so it's, it's both 
marketing as well as product, honestly, uh, kind of sits in that intersection because that that community is amazing at helping you refine um, the, the actual product. And did people discover that Discord community on their own accord, or would you try to? Did you take in a lot of effort to drive people there? This, I gotta admit, is actually new to me. The idea of a you know creating your own Discord community for your yeah. for your product. It's it's both. Um, I think the Discord algo will actually recommend groups um, based on your usage and preferences, um, but also you know we would drive site visitors to our discord community as well Uh, so it's both ways and is that more of a thing on discord than i can imagine there would be probably also some just more general discord groups on health and wellness ai tools where people might talk about Mm -hmm. any company's product did you find it worthwhile to have someone lurking there and commenting or yeah um, actually um that was one of the things we did um our community manager was also active in these more general groups. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you have to do it in a way that's authentic, right? You don't want to be like uh, like a salesperson in all these groups. Um, so it, there's a, a graceful balance um, in how you insert yourself into the conversation. And then also like at the right moment mention, you should check out our product. It's great. Um, I think there's a lot of support for, AI entrepreneurs in general um, in Discord. And so generally when you say like, hey, we built this, um, come check it out there. And, you know, it's a, it comes from a very authentic place. Um, there's there's appetite for people to be supportive and click on your link and and, um, and learn more about your company. And uh, what about Reddit? Is that still, you know, I was just going to mention it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think Reddit is kind of, honestly taking over Google in some, in some respects. Um, I have found Reddit to be much more efficient in terms of cost uh, for, for acquisition than Google. Um, I, I know like it probably really depends on the product and um, who you're going after, but I think for AI, um, AI products, um, Reddit is, is actually where, you might see better returns. Like we were able to get um, cost per click to be like down to a dollar, um, you know, versus I think on Google tends to be like in the financial space, like it's $4, $6, you know? So when you, when you think about the kind of savings you can get and also that you are likely to get a, a stronger conversion um, metrics through Reddit, than Google, like that's kind of a no-brainer. I think the beauty about Reddit too is that you can be super targeted about inserting yourself in a conversation that's relevant to your product. Um, you can, you know, search, you can specify specific terms that um, and, and threads that you want to be featured in. Um, so that's, you know, a, probably a new space where not as many people are also bidding for terms or um, uh, space, real estate in the Reddit environment. So if you get in there now, it's uh, going to be a lot more cost effective than it probably will be years from now. Amazing. Well, I could easily spend much more time with you diving into some of the details, uh, but, but I think our time is up. Cheryl, could you share with us uh, what's the best place for people who want to find you online, perhaps reach out to you? Where would you point them online? Um, you can go to my website. It's CherylTanConsulting.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn at uh, you know LinkedIn.com backslash uh, Cheryl L Tan. If you Google Cheryl Lim Tan, you'll also probably find me. All right, we will include those links in the show notes. <laughs> Cheryl, thank you so much for joining today. This is really fascinating view into marketing a new AI product. Glad to be here. Thanks for the opportunity to share.